Does your daily routine leave you lost in a sea of repetition? 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 Hendrix Gin invites you to leave the mundane and heed the call of your curiosity. Escape the conventional and embrace the delectable. Welcome to the world of Hendrix Gin. Oddly infused with rose and cucumber. Undeniably peculiar, utterly delicious. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Tales 2020, the virtual tour. Uh, my name is Elaine Duff, and I'm your moderator today. Uh, and we're going to be speaking about building a brand ambassador program for the current climate and beyond. And on my panel uh, with me is the lovely Charlotte Vosey, uh, who's won more accolades than we have time for. But uh, just for the highlights, uh, she won a Best American Brand Ambassador at Tales uh, Golden Spirits Awards. She's been recognized by James Beard for her contribution to Mixology. And she is the Global Manager of Brand Ambassadors for William Grants. So thank you very much, Charlotte, for being here. Uh, along with her is Lana Galliani. Uh, Lana has been worked in the restaurant and bar industry for over nine years. Uh, she started off her career as a SOM at the Michelin star restaurant hockey son and has worked uh, behind the bar as well and amazing bars like pouring ribbons and seamstress and uh, the holiday cocktail lounge uh, and now she lives in Denver where she moved to start her own bar and now actually works as a project manager and I got to know Lana you might be thinking why is she on this panel well Lana is also an incredible brand ambassador and worked for me uh, through a part-time program for Laird's and she's one of the best brand ambassadors I have ever met to date uh, for myself um, if we've never met uh, I had the pleasure of working as the head mixologist and luxury spirits brand ambassador for Diageo for over 15 years and now have my own consultancy company or help brands with their own uh, training of their, their brand ambassador programs, as well as a bunch of other stuff. But today we're just talking about brand ambassadors and we wanna share our knowledge so we hopefully can help you um, develop brand ambassador programs or the ones that you have now, how they can be utilized uh, in this current environment and what you've been doing for the future to keep developing it. So we're gonna start off just by talking about what exactly is the role of a brand ambassador? Because there's a lot of uh, notions about what it could be and what it is, but there are many different things. So if you wanted to be a brand ambassador, um, you might be wondering exactly what it would entail, or if you're looking to hire one, or you have them and you're like, what else should they be doing? Or what can they be doing? So a brand ambassador uh, for many is a very, very complex role because it's not just one thing. Uh, a brand ambassador has to be a part-time partier. Uh, as well as being a business person. And, and they have to do it all, all the time in a responsible way. They're a full-time networker. They're always on and talking to everybody. Um, they're a social media influencer. They're a photographer. They're a presenter. They're an educator. They have to be a spirits expert. They generally are mixologists. They have to be a professional student, constantly learning about the industry and new trends going on. They're a part-time brand manager, trying to help the brand grow uh, in the right direction. They're an event planner. All the time that they have to plan different events, whether it's online or in person, uh, they have to be a part-time sales manager. They're constantly presenting their brands, talking to people, hopefully they're bringing it in for the most part. And they have to be an accountant. Many times they have to manage very, very large budgets. So what they are not differs. For many people it is a different role, but for most people they have an expectation. Like you worked in this business, you were a bartender or you work for a brand. You should have all these skills. So many times brand ambassadors don't have a lot of the skills uh, because they would never work there and they shouldn't have these skills. So things to know about them. Most of the time, they're not a sales rep. They never worked on the sales side. Um, they probably aren't that good at it. They've been sold too. Um, they can do it, but it's not generally the thing that they came to the table with. 
but so it might be something that they might be helping trained on if that's a goal for them. They're also not an endless source of context. Yes, they probably have tons, but that doesn't mean you should exhaust them all, uh, all the time. Um, they're probably not a spirits industry expert. Yes, they understand the business. They understand how it works. Um, they've been behind the bar. They um, basically how marketing works, but they don't really have the big picture. Most of us, unless you've been in this business for, you know, over a certain period of time, haven't had the pleasure of working on all sides of the industry, working on marketing, working on distributing, understanding what a bland, a bland, a brand plan is, you know, understanding why the distributor is selling one product over another. So these are things that they need to be taught and it will help them be better brand ambassadors. Um, they're also not a bank. So if you have a part-time brand ambassador and you ask them to use their credit card, you got to pay it back pretty quickly because a lot of them only have small credit. Um, a legal expert. So you need to teach them what's legal and what's not because why would they know this beforehand? A social media expert. Yes, they have an Instagram account. They probably have a TikTok account and they have a Facebook account, but doesn't mean that they're an expert on how exactly it should be executed. So this is training that they're going to need. A computer expert. Just because they have one doesn't mean you actually know how to use PowerPoint or Excel. Um, so these are things they might need trained on, or maybe don't ask for them at all. Just say, send it to me in a Word document. They'll get it. You'll get the information you need much faster. Um, a person with no life, they have to have a balance. They have a, a personal life, you know, so you have to make sure they don't get burnt out by allowing them some downtime. They're generally not off-premise experts. They probably never worked in the off-premise, and the only time they've been in it is to go buy some stuff for their own home bar. So these are things that they're going to need to be taught if you want them to be focusing on that. And a financial expert. Many of them, especially if you're young and in the industry, you're just learning you know, uh, about finances and credit. So these are things you're gonna need to help them on. So just some things to keep in mind when you're putting together your brand ambassador program. So what we're gonna talk about next, now that we established what they are and what they're not, is how they can be most effective right now. Um, so I spoke to, I'm going to talk for a little bit and then I'm going to talk, have Charlotte actually talk about what her team is doing and what some people are doing within the industry. So I had the pleasure of uh, interviewing some brand ambassadors who are out in the market right now um, and what they're doing within their accounts. Because even though the market is very different, as we all know, and a lot of accounts are closed, that doesn't mean you can't be still continuing to help accounts. And there are so many things that you can do to keep building your brand because people are going to remember who was there for them and who wasn't. So we'll just start with some things when I was asking people what they were doing. So account maintenance. If you have a brands or accounts that are open right now, they need support. You know, as we know, they're not doing half the business that they were before or a quarter of it. So you can go by and pick up cocktails and purchase them. Um, you can provide morale. A lot of times people just need somebody to talk to and they need a pep talk to let them know they're not alone. Uh, meals, you can go from one account, purchase meals at that account and bring them to another so you can help them, you know, support them. Um, provide a platform, you know, maybe it's your Instagram live or your Facebook live, allowing them to tell their stories, provide education um, and things of that nature, giving them jobs to do um, and helping them earn uh, money during this time. Open new accounts. You'd be surprised how many new bars are open. So they can be out there paying attention to which new bars are open and helping them, you know, with R&D by dropping off samples and things that, you know, things like that that will help the bar get on its feet sooner than later. And driving sales to e-commerce platforms via online classes. A lot of off-premise accounts right now have online platforms. They need content. And you could be providing uh, online content to them that can help drive sales within their stores. So that's what you can be doing within and for accounts. Um, also, I'm going to talk about what we can do for the brand itself and how they still can be contributing in such a vital way right now. So, Charlotte? Yeah, thanks, Elaine. And I think in, in this particular context, it really comes down to understanding why you have ambassadors in the first place, what their role is, what their scope of work is, and really what the objective of their, of their work is and their activity. So everything that you've mentioned before, completely agree with, right? Brand ambassadors can still be uh, impactful in the accounts. And the same is true just for ongoing brand activity. So for example, one of the things that ambassadors with my team at William Grant & Sons have been really busy with since lockdown is PR and press opportunities. Some of them they're creating themselves by proactively putting out content on social media. 
But one thing that we've actually found through our PR agencies is that a lot of media networks, whether it's print magazines, online, even TV stations, are asking for content, especially when lockdown started. A lot of their crews weren't able to get out and about. And even if they were, there was no one out and about to interview. So what they ended up doing was coming to us and saying, you know, do you have any content? So our ambassadors would clean their kitchens, right? Every ambassador has the most spotless of kitchens during lockdown and start to make uh, videos at home. So cocktails at home, talking about trends, whatever it was, you know, National Margarita Day, uh, there are a dime a dozen these days. So ambassadors would start to create content for PR purposes and parcel that off to media outlets, which in turn creates great press opportunities for the brand. So that's one thing we've seen for sure. Um, the other thing is just social media in general, right? The world might have sort of shut down physically outside of our homes, but we've never been more connected via screens. And if your ambassador is in place to spread brand love or awareness or tell stories or educate about your category, your brand, they can still do that via their social media platforms. So that outlet has been a godsend, really, to keep ambassadors not just busy, but to keep the brand relevant and on the radar of your major audiences. Um, there's still a massive opportunity, right, to support the trade. You mentioned morale before, Elaine. This is mm -hmm. oh, the hardest year, I think, you know, talking to bars and bartenders myself, this is the hardest thing they've ever been through. And in good times, ambassadors are always there to sort of throw parties, have events, keep the morale up high. It's never been needed more than this year. And yes, they need to do it in a different way, but being there for bartenders, whether that's simply conversations or visiting them at counts, like you said, is really, really important. Um, and in a similar way, this is a good time to sort of knuckle down and get some education or extra training under our belts, whether that's for distributors or sales teams, other internal teams, agencies. Uh, it's really sort of making the most of the extra time we have and the channels that were still open to us um, so that ambassadors can still be doing good work for the brand. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, uh, uh, training distributors right now, uh, I've done a few, and it is, they're actually paying attention because they, they need brands they want to be able to sell. Um, even yeah. though they're offline, they basically are paying attention. Um, but it's a great time to kind of reconnect with them. Uh, yeah. And they need the moral support too. I think they need to know they're out, out there uh, alone. All right. Um, so let's talk about how to hire the right BA for you. So Lana, I would love for you to take us through like, what do you need to be a great brand ambassador? I mean, obviously that's going to be, that's going to vary somewhat depending a little bit on, on who you work for and, and what the structure is there. You know, everyone has different needs. And part of being a good brand ambassador is figuring out what those needs are and adapting to them, right? Certain things will always be valuable. Uh, being reliable, bartenders don't necessarily have the most reliable reputations, but that is half the battle. Uh, that'll go a very long way. Um, you've got to, you know, be ready to work hard. You know, some people think about a brand ambassador gig as uh, a chance to party on someone else's dime, and that may be part of the job, but don't forget that you're also working, um, and it's harder than it looks. Uh, mm -hmm. Your social media will be a necessary component of your job most of the time. And that might mean that you have to use it in a way that you're not used to. And whether that means you're cleaning it up or you're shifting the focus or you're adapting your tone or your message, you know, keep in mind that's going to be necessary. Um, and also on that note, Lana, I was going to say, the other thing is when I made a note saying, keep it clean. It's like, as a person looking to hire a brand ambassador, if your social media is a disaster and you know, there's pictures in there on your platform that are inappropriate, there's a good chance you might not get the job. And again, that depends a lot. You know, uh, Charlotte, you had mentioned once that different companies have different standards. So, you know, you, a more edgy, so to speak, uh, social media account might work for certain brands and other companies may be significantly more conservative. So it, it would behoove you to be aware of, of who you're applying with. Yes. what their expectations are, and then kind of tailor things a little bit to what's necessary. But also, again, you're looking for a good fit, right? Your, your role is going to be, to a certain extent, to embody the brand you work for. So you want to make sure you feel comfortable with the role they require. So yeah. if you are not a very conservative person and you like to, you know, get a little loose and wild, think about who you're applying with. 
Mm -hmm. You know, are, are you going to be uncomfortable being very buttoned up all the time? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that conversation kind of goes both ways in some senses. Uh, you have to be a really good presenter. Um, everything you do suddenly becomes a presentation. And that's yeah. important to be aware of and to practice your skills at and to get comfortable doing. Not everyone is really uh, comfortable with it right away. It takes some time. Yeah. Um, and then being proactive, especially with part-time work, you are sort of left to your own devices. Um, there's not someone looking over your shoulder all the time. There's not someone checking in on you. You have to be ready to take take the reins of the job, figure out what needs to get done, do those things, and then check in backwards. You know, be like, here's what I'm doing. Does this work for you? Are these the right things? Is this what you were looking for? And that's going to get you a lot more results than waiting for someone to come and tell you, here's what we expect. Absolutely. Uh, and then in terms of the interview, you know, a lot of this you would think goes without saying, but you would be surprised. Address the part again know a little bit about what the brand expects in terms of their norms and standards and dress appropriately for that. Do some homework so that you look like you know what you're talking about. You care about the company itself. You're not just showing up looking for any brand gig. You know, they want to know that their category, their company, their product is particularly meaningful to you. And then it helps a lot if you show that you understand the category itself and the competition you're going to be, the competitive environment you're working in. That really is impressive, I think, to a brand to realize that you've you've done all this thinking and you're ready to operate. Absolutely. Thanks, Lana. Um, so Charlotte, what are, should you be looking for in your brand ambassador when you're hiring them? So these are some of the things that, that we look for from William Grantson's perspective. And I think it's probably very similar across the board. And it all starts with an engaging personality, right? As Lana's mentioned, brand ambassadors all, are all about bringing brands to life, embodying the brand, making that connection in real life about what the brand is, what it stands for. So the personality of the brand ambassador needs to be engaging, needs to be compelling, needs to be able to connect with people so that they find you interesting and they remember what you've said. Um, so that's probably the priority. And that's something that, as we know, you can't teach, right? Some people have it and some people don't. So it's really important. Uh, we structure our interview process to hone in on exactly this. You know, we'll bring people in to give a live presentation and ask them to present on something that they're passionate about. It doesn't necessarily have to be the brand or the category they're interviewing for, but we want to see that passion. We want to feel it. We want to understand if they've got the power to connect with people. So that's first and foremost. Uh, brand embodiment, I've mentioned, Lana's mentioned as well. You, values need to be aligned, right? Who you are, what you believe in, how you conduct yourself needs to align with the brand so that it is a good natural match, so that you don't feel ingenuine or disgenuine or inauthentic when you're embodying this brand. Uh, it, has, it has to work both ways. Passion for the category, absolutely. You can't, I think best ambassador practice is when you truly understand the category at large and are able to have respect for it and talk about the category and then how your brand fits into the category. It's not just blinkers on that your brand exists in a silo. Um, bartenders like to learn about categories at large. In fact, the whole of the spirits industry. So the more you know, the better you'll be. Um, we look for self-starters, right? This is a tremendous opportunity. The, the role of the brand ambassador is a wonderful job. To get the most out of it, you need to be organized. You need to be a, a self-starter so that you can be very proactive, again, that word, and, and go out there and, and look for opportunities um, and get things done. So that's a really important part. And then social media, listen, it's ever more important, right? Wh whether you love it or hate it. And it's not necessarily the person with the most followers gets the job. No, absolutely not, because that is something we can teach and train. There are strategies in place to grow your following, and brands may or may not be in a position to help with that. But we do need people who are either willing to get their arms around social media or are already savvy with it, because it's increasingly important, and especially this year, right? It's been a lifeline for ambassadors to continue their work. And then... We'll say it again, engaging personality. It's really uh, so important. We put it down twice. <laughs> Sorry, but I realized I put that in there twice. No, and so, yeah, no, it really is important, especially now and this year. It's like being engaging on social media and being engaging in this platform is not easy. And a lot of people, it doesn't translate. Yeah. You know, they're better in person. So these are things that you yeah. really have to look for them to embody. And if you are, as a brand ambassador right now, these are things you really need to practice, you know, like just getting better at it. And the more you do it, it really is the better you get at it. 
Um, yes. So I just recommend doing it all the time. Even if it's just like putting in your own stories and then hiding them. I do that all the time. You just see how many videos I've never seen in the flight of day. But also <laughs> be honest, if you're looking for, uh, you know, every brand ambassador, those, these are more traditional roles of brand ambassadors. And then, you know, about a building the brand and embodying it. But if you're looking for a sales, a lot of people are just looking, I just want somebody to gain sales and to build my brand. Your needs might be different. You might not need the person who used to be the bartender. You might just want the person that, you know, has a little bit of sales ground. They used to work in retail. You know, they're just good at talking to, um, just talking to people and engaging with them. And their job is just to sell. It's a different, in, we have, there's different worlds within our industry. Yeah. Um, and so there's like the cocktail industry world and then there's the regular bars, right? The, which is most of a lot of the bars out there. And those people sometimes need a different person talking to them. Um, they don't sometimes care about whiskey. It's just, does your brand sell? And is anybody coming to come buy it from you? So, but you have to be honest and you have to know that's what you want from that person. If you can get somebody to do all of it, then you probably got the perfect package. So, and they do exist, um, out there in the industry. Um, all right, so how do you find the uh, right uh, candidate? So you are, you know, you can post on social media, obviously, through the obvious channels. Um, you can tap into your current brand ambassadors to ask them if they have people that they recommend because um, they know exactly how your company works. Uh, ask bartenders or owners if they've met other brand ambassadors or if they have people working for them. Obviously, they probably won't want to give up the people working for them, but they might have met other brand ambassadors from other companies. Not that I engage in stealing other brand ambassadors, but maybe they just know, hey, this person's pretty great. So it's always good having the conversation. Obviously, LinkedIn. Obviously, if you have the money, having a recruiter out there. But also, Cheryl, you brought up something that was really interesting, and I think it's true, especially when you're looking for more diverse people, um, that you should be looking outside. So you mentioned, I think, the theater industry. Yeah, and again, it goes back to what what's the priority in this candidate that you're looking for, right? And if it is the ability to connect with people and be engaging and present well on stage, then maybe you are looking for someone with a theatrical background. Why not? That could be a good place to start. And then you teach the rest, right? But if you mm -hmm. need someone who is inside and out credible with mixology, then you probably are going to go to the bar industry and find someone with that knowledge. So it comes down to your priorities. And then just to steal your next point here about baristas, I remember years ago, Ryan McGarrian uh, telling me that he would always kind of poach from Starbucks. He would go into a Starbucks and see like these quick, methodical, mise en place savvy baristas just <laughs> pumping out coffees, like intricate, specific orders, like without missing a heartbeat. And it's based, you know, two-handed coffee making. And it was basically like bartender ready. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, thinking outside of the box, you're right, can lead you to a more diverse candidate pool and also bringing in skills that are really useful in this role. And the other advice I give is like, always be recruiting. You know, you yeah. meet people um, that you find yeah. are engaging, you know, you're in different parts of, you know, you went to a different part of town, you met this great bartender, you know, you meet somebody, you know, at a company, you're like, wow. And just, you know, always like say, hey, send my interview. We're not looking for somebody resume. We're not looking for somebody right now, but I'd love to interview you to see if you're a potential candidate because yeah, as we know, it can take months to find the, the right fit. So to be start hiring somebody and recruiting all the time, you have more chance of getting a more diverse staff, uh, as well as, you know, easier to bring the right people on board quicker. Yep. All right. So how to vet the potential candidate? Um, because we definitely, for this job, you don't want to hire blind. You don't, a lot of people, as we all know, will have an incredibly written resume. Uh, most of it's bullshit, sorry, uh, but it's BS. And uh, sometimes. And they also might give amazing first interviews. So Charlotte, I think I really love your, you start talking about how you do your interview process. Yeah, we, we have, you know, phone calls, get to know the person, but then, you know, if, if they look promising, we'll bring them in for a live interview. They'll come into our bar in the office or they used to in the old world. And we would ask them to present on something that they're passionate about for sort of 10 to 15 minutes. And then usually make a cocktail. Um, just to show the skills that they have and how comfortable they are behind the, behind the bar. But what we're looking for is that ability to engage, right? And also the ability to make a first impression, right? We all know that interviews are tough and they bring out nerves in the best of us. 
But at the end of the day, the role of a brand ambassador often is to walk into a room full of people you've never met before and you have one chance to make an impression. So it's basically we set up the interview so that they can demonstrate their ability to do the job already, even if they're not presenting on that brand. Um, and it's, it's great. Uh, it allows us to get to know the person uh, and the potential of their personality. Absolutely. And now we also talked about a little bit about um, background checks, about you know things you should be looking for just to make sure the person is everything they say they are. Um, and you learned some interesting knowledge recently about this. Yeah, so the idea of background checks, obviously references are super important. Looking through social media, as we've mentioned, just gives you a kind of idea about someone's judgment, perhaps, and their line of good taste, bad taste. And then when it comes to criminal records, so I was tuning into the Gimme Brown seminars a few weeks ago, hosted by Ashton Berry, and I started to learn something really important that you know, in society, especially in America at the moment, the criminal justice system or the legal system is inherently stacked against people of color. So mm -hmm. if you as a company have a blanket policy against people with criminal records, you're essentially sort of contributing to that discrimination. So it's not to say that you should disregard criminal records, of course not. But perhaps if possible, look at them as a case by case basis to truly understand uh, the reason or the situation, it could be that people were suffering from discrimination or, or unjust behavior. So it's just something to be aware of as, as we all become a little bit more learned in this area. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also just sometimes I've met people and their reference, like somebody gave an off comment, they didn't like that person. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I have a feeling there's something behind that story and I would like to hear it, you know, and hear the, the full story because, you know, it, it, everybody has a story and sometimes there is a lot more to like one mistake. Um, as we know in this current environment, there's a lot more sometimes behind one, one mistake yeah. that doesn't make up the whole person. All right. Um, so now that we talked about, you know, getting the candidates, now how much will it cost? So, because this is something I think a lot of people are unaware of how expensive brand ambassadors are, or, you know, or even a brand ambassador, how much it costs. So, you know, we just put together some estimated budgets. These are not exact budgets. These are just kind of some of the major buckets of where, if you were having a full-time brand ambassador, what it could cost you uh, and what current salaries benchmark. Um, so the advantage, you know, of hiring somebody internally, um, like if you're working for a Williams Grant, you work directly for the company, um, and you have no agency, so you don't have to pay an agency fee, right? So, um, and then within the salary, you know, salary ranges, depending on where, what part of the country you're in or what's, you know, what part of the world you're in, um, because it's going to, you know, obviously different costs of living. Um, they range anywhere from 60,000 to 120,000. I've met people have made even more than that. Um, but your teeny is making sure, and that also depends on where you live. Um, so it could be anywhere from between 30 and 50,000. The one thing that I don't know a lot of people think of is an activation budget. And Charlotte, I know you guys have a great policy for your activation budget. I'd just love you to expand upon. Yeah, and this is obviously, you know, something you can choose to do or not, but this is all about giving ambassadors some money to play with so that they can actually trial out some of their ideas, right? Sometimes the biggest programs come from the smallest of ideas and those come from ambassadors. So this could be, it's above and beyond regular T&E, so it's not travel and food and drink. This is, you know, could be a collaboration to brand some bottles for an event. It could be a bartender trip somewhere. It could be, you know, t-shirts, who knows? It's it's a little bit of space for people to have the freedom to win with some of their own ideas. But it's also important that there's a little bit of discretion here so that it's okay for ambassadors to try things that maybe don't work as well, because that's how they'll learn. And also you give them parameters, right? You tell them like oh, what the brand course. strategy is, you know, so they understand what might fit within that brand strategy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's a really important part of this, of course. Yeah. No, a lot of people don't, they forget that. Like the, the, the brand ambassador needs the full picture in order to be yep. able to make that decision in the right way. Um, so it's not just a brand training. You have to actually, what is the goal of the brand? What is the strategy? Yep. What, is, what is our vision? Is just important as like knowing what botanicals might be in the gym. Um, yep. So those things aren't, and also the fact that this also speeds up the process. It's really frustrating if you are on the street and you have great ideas and you know this is a good concept and then you have to constantly go to somebody else to ask them for approval to get this done. And that person, you are the lowest person on their, like, their list. They're like, they have to make some giant presentation. You know, they have other pressures that are happening. 
and you know this event's happening next week and they, they don't get back to you for a week so it's like giving them that autonomy to make a decision makes them look more powerful to a bar or an account so they're like this is the person i can work with make some better partners overall yeah um, so i think that's that is a great thing so we also just put in there so if you were to work with an agency because a lot of people don't have internal uh, systems in place where they have an HR department that can handle all the new staff or the payroll department. Um, so there is an advantage of working with a, an agency, uh, but there's also a fee. They usually charge you anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, which can add on anywhere from 40 to 100,000, you know, onto your brand into a half a million uh, onto your brand ambassador program as a whole. Um, there are obviously benefits in the fact that they are handling all your press, I mean, sorry, all your PR, I'm sorry, I keep saying this wrong, your payroll and your expenses and the reporting. Um, there's also a disadvantage and advantage for a brand ambassador working for an agency versus just working directly for the brand. When you work for an agency, the advantage is there's kind of a layer of protection between you and the brand. Like, so sometimes brand people want crazy things and your agency is able to kind of be like no i don't think this is a good fit and let me like you know we're managing them or um there's just it just yeah there's just another layer there that you don't have to always uh do everything it's like no we have other people there might be more staff within the agency that can handle some of the more menial tasks that maybe if you work directly as a brand you would have to do yourself um but there's also a disadvantage you're also cut off from the brand team so you're not like at the table all the time for like brand planning meetings like what would you think an advantage for working directly for the brand charlotte is yeah i mean i think being fully integrated into the brand team gives you that comprehensive knowledge of what the brand strategy is keeps you in contact with challenges with objectives aspirations of the brand it's the bigger picture right as you said before which helps guide the smaller decisions every day um, there's also just a feeling of, of being valued and being part of a larger team, like a common goal, uh, which a lot of people like. And I think it's fair to say that it often feels a bit more secure, perhaps for the longer term, if you are employed by a company, especially, again, speaking in my experience, when you look at a company like William Grant, still family owned, the brands are ours. Um, right you know it's it's likely that the company's going nowhere the brands aren't going anywhere you know this is something that we're in for the long haul and being part of that whole system i think is reassuring for a brand ambassador absolutely lana any disadvantage to working for a brand for an agency <laughs> you worked for an agency <laughs> i've done both um it can it can it can depend like you were saying i think it's important to feel like you're in the room and working for a brand directly can be both more educational and more efficient. You know, if you have a question or you need to know something, you can go directly to the decision maker or directly to the person with the information. Um, and it, it can also give you more leverage. Um, I think the contacts you make can be more valuable when it's time to move laterally or up or, or in any direction. Um, you've made slightly more valuable relationships, I think. but working for an agency again that layer of protection can be useful it it does however sometimes provide a point of conflict you know your your agency and your uh brand may not always have the same directives they, they may vary a little bit and then it's kind of awkwardly on you to figure out how to manage that which can that be is very true that is very strange. true the, the yeah. agency might have their own objectives that isn't always uh, on the same place as the page and there is a disconnect there because the agency is there as more of an activation agency sometimes and put mm -hmm. programs together and then they're, they're not always privy to what the brand is thinking and the brand might be like planning something five years ahead that the agency isn't aware of just yet because they only get it when they get their briefing. So there is that disconnect. All right, so there's also, so part-time brand ambassadors. So just, this is not an exact, sign. like everybody has as many different models out there. So some people like the model can be, you get a base salary and it's for a certain amount of hours a week. Um, Lana and I kind of talked about this, like, you know, 10 hours is, doesn't exist. It, it, it's impossible. Like you cannot do your job in 10 hours, no matter where you're working for. So somewhere between 15 and 20 hours is generally 20 hours I find is kind of like the sweet spot. Um, the major rule is make sure the amount of time you're asking for them is also, we're going to talk and break it down in an evening, but is worth a bar shift. Like what they would be making, even in this current environment, there's still bar shifts happening. 
um, out there that it's worth, you know, them taking a night off for. Because if you want them to be a little more invested, they're probably going to have to cut their shifts down um, from, you know, four or five times a week to like three times a week, depending on their role. Um, so you have to make sure it's worth their while. Um, and I know, Lana, you'll tell a little bit about that. I just want to go through this. So there's also just another instructor. So you can have a base salary somewhere between $1,200 to $2,000 uh, a month. And then you usually have incentives on top of that. Some people just have a full incentive budget, so they get a certain amount of money per week, and then they're paid to open up new accounts. I find that one to be, if it, the money is the right way, I've talked to a lot of brand ambassadors, the one they prefer, because opening a new account and getting a menu placement could mean an extra like $300 on top of their weekly pay, which is a nice deal. So it really does incentivize them to work harder to, uh, to get placements for you. Um, and then a lot of times, uh, you know, there could be, you are a brand ambassador for one brand and you get another role. You can never do conflicting. Maybe it's a soda company. So while you're in there, you're also pitching the soda um, and you get a certain amount of money per case. You get money for landing the account. So there are many different ways. And then, but it's just good, even just having part-time brand ambassadors, sometimes if you just pay them for events and you know you have them because those brand ambassadors generally work at other bars sometimes and if you're their part-time brand ambassador they're more likely to put you on the menu even if you're just on the event pay that you're the constant like person they call up all the time than they would if you didn't so this is just way of one way of getting brands uh bartenders invested in your brand is by hiring them uh, as part-time brand ambassadors for you um but lano i think one of the biggest things we want to talk about and the bis biggest misnomer is like, how much TV does my brand ambassador actually need? And how much time does it actually take them on a night out to do their job? So Lana, I would love for you to take us through it. Sure. Um, I, I think it's very common to have a brand approach you and say, hey, we'd like you to work 10 hours a week and we think we can do 10 visits and here's your budget for that. And, that, and those budgets vary much more dramatically than I had initially expected. I, I was surprised at, at the range of uh, what a budget it could be for a uh, T&E. And in, let's just talk money first. In, in New York City, say your transportation might just be a Metro card and you know taxis or Ubers when you need them, but you can do most of the gig with a Metro card. It's like 115, 120, I think, when I left around mm -hmm. down there per month, not a lot. Um, and if you live in a city, like, so when I moved to Denver, for example, I didn't realize until I started, you know, having to visit accounts, there's no Metro that goes anywhere useful. You're not riding the bus that comes every half hour. If you're lucky, uh, everything is Ubers and Lyfts and that's, you know, it's, it's a minimum of $11 to get anywhere. Everything's mm -hmm. a 10 to 15 minute ride. If, and depending, obviously, you can be more efficient in how you stack your, your night and do things in a row or pick a street or a neighborhood and try and cut down on your travel, but you can't get around it. There's just no. So you need to be aware of how much of your T and E is actually going to T. And do you have enough left for the actual expenses of the visits and accounts that you're going going to be seeing, you know, so a smart thing to do when you get the ask, which is here's your number of visits per week and your budget is break it out. Um, look at how much time it's gonna take you in each account. You're probably gonna wanna spend an hour in each, each place when you factor in going in, getting seated, ordering a drink, waiting for your moment to chat, having a chat, not looking like you're in a hurry, uh, you know, closing out and leaving. <laughs> um, and then you need time to get to the next one. You need time in that next account. You know, can you really do 10 accounts in 10 hours? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a very common, they assume you can do a number of accounts per number of hours you're working and they're just not thinking about all of the additional uh, time costs that go into that. And then, yeah, break your budget out. How much does each visit cost you in transportation alone? Is $20 enough for your drink and your tip? Are you expected to buy drinks for anyone else at the bar? Are you expected to be able to buy the bartender a cocktail? Are you able to spend money on food? You know, when you're out five account visits a night, you know, and you're trying to be responsible, where, where does that come from? How much is, can you allocate to that? And not everyone will tell you right away that yes, you can spend money on food. This, this percentage should go to transportation. You really have to work that out yourself. And that'll tell you pretty quickly whether or not the budget and time you've been asked and are being paid for is adequate to the task. And that may have to come back to a conversation where you say, hey, 
I know this was the initial expectation, but here's how I've broken it down. Here's how many hours are going to this and to that. Here's where my budget is going and it's just not covering what you need. So either we need to scale back what I'm being asked for or we need to scale up my resources. Absolutely. And I really appreciate when you did break it down because it was eye opening to look at. But also it's like if you are somebody who owns a brand and looking at brand about you need to feed them. They, they do need to eat in the yes. evening. Um, you need to, to make sure that is allocated in there. And, and Lana and I, you talked about it. it is, they're generally more effective sometimes if they have somebody with them. So they're sitting at yeah. the bar, order two drinks at the bar, and then they get into the conversation with the, the bartender. They're not out It's partying. a more natural yeah. situation. It is more natural. And it is a lonely job when you're out there bouncing around uh, accounts by yourself all the time. So for morale's sake, it's also nice to have somebody coming out with you. Um, and so, you know, and you're probably buying them a drink as well. And, you know, so these days, I mean, just looking at it. So an evening, uh, four to six accounts can run, if you're hitting four accounts, it can run you anywhere from $165, uh, you know, to $300 in an evening. So, you know, you have to factor that in and that's just for one night um, and in going out. So you got to factor that in when you are building uh, your budget. And now these times it can be even different, right, Lana? Oh, for sure. I mean, right now you're not going to be spending the same amount of time in an account because obviously indoor sitting and isn't happening. And also you don't want to spend an hour in close quarters talking to somebody in the same way you did before. So those, mm -hmm. those uh, approaches are different, but you can spend, and it's almost more important for you to be spending more money because you can go to a bar and buy a number of drinks for takeout and take them somewhere else. And that, that's still a valued approach and it is appreciated both by the bar you're spending your money at and the bar who's getting presents without requiring that you try and have these face-to-face -face conversations that are currently very awkward. So you'd be shifting your resources a bit um, and it's important to be prepared for what that's gonna look like. Absolutely. So let's talk about also, all right, so we're talking about, we have two different roles um, here. We have part-time and we have full-time. Um, so there is advantages and disadvantages to both. So if you are looking to hire somebody or if you're looking to become a brand ambassador, um, so the one thing we talked about is, you know, hiring a new brand ambassador, just something to keep in mind because a lot of times people hire brand new ambassadors and they hire part-time, they expect them to hit the street running. That doesn't happen. I mean, yes, if you have more experience, you're going to get up to date a little bit faster. But generally, it, takes, it can take as much as three months to get more comfortable and to understand their, your new company, your new role, like the bartenders have to get to know you differently because you're working, doing something else. Um, for somebody who has no experience, it can go as long as six months or seven months. Some people say it really took them about a year before they really felt comfortable, especially when they were in a new position and they didn't have as much experience. Now, obviously, this can be cut in half. If you have extensive training, like in the beginning, and you really take time to invest in them, even if it's part-time, it's worth taking that time. Your managing and mentorship is uh, more proactive, on a, and especially in the beginning. Um, and these two things alone will help them get up to speed a lot faster. So within the advantages of uh, part-time, um, just because I know we have a short period of time and I want to get into training, um, is um, so part-time, so I'm going to quickly talk about this. So you have advantages, right? So you have less overhead, right? So you don't have to bring them in. A lot of times they can be a 1099 employee. Um, you have a larger pool of talent, especially right now. There is so much talent out there uh, because a lot of bartenders are out of work. So this is a great time to be recruiting. Um, there's a lot more flexibility uh, with the brand ambassador and how they're utilized, uh, shorter commitments, and you probably get, you know, some quick wins because a lot of times they use their contacts that they have um, very quickly. Um, as a brand ambassador, there's, you know, being a brand, a part-time, you got flexibility, you get to gain experience. So Charlotte had mentioned, we had talked about it uh, in a different conversation, like, would you hire somebody more likely because they got experience as a brand ambassador? And she said that would contribute to it, right, Charlotte? Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, advantages, you're going to have extra money, right? Because you're making more money. You're getting free drinks and dinner to go out, which is a lot of fun. There's potential travel. Um, and you can also work with multiple brands. So you can actually learn uh, different companies if you're only working part-time for one, as long as it's non-compete. So the disadvantages of having a part-time brand ambassador generally are there's high turnover because they're not as invested in your company um, because you're not as invested in them. Um, it's not their primary focus. They have other jobs. So sometimes you fall by the wayside, especially uh, in, in many circumstances. So 
Um, there's no real relationship building because they don't have a chance to actually go to the accounts and spend solid time or go back because they have to hit a lot of things. They have to do a lot of things a lot faster in a shorter period of time. Um, so there's a lot of quick wins followed by quick losses. So they get it into the account, but then they don't have time to go back to the account. So you lose that placement and there's generally no relationship with the distributor um, because the distributor is like, oh, you're, you're one of the next brand ambassadors coming along. All depends on the type of model that you have. So there are better models that don't have that problem. Um, also as a brand ambassador, disadvantage, a lot of times you have to use your own credit card and you have to wait for it to get paid back. Um, you must have a computer. This still shocks me about how many people don't have a computer. It's worth the investment, but you really should have a computer to do your job better. Um, there is a huge disruption of life work balance and that's true for full time too. Um, you might burn through your connections because you're trying to impress your new job and new company. So you're like using all your connections and that's not good. It's really something you shouldn't do. And a lot of times it's unrealistic expectation as Lana mentioned, like a lot of times people like create these things out of thin air, throw it at the wall, stick to it and say, here, make miracles happen. And you really do have to fight for yourself to kind of be like, this is not possible. Um, so part-time making it work. Um, what you really could do is make sure you vet for a self-starter, you pay fairly, make sure your budgets are reasonable, you provide proper training uh, and guidance, you, over, um, you open communication between the two of you, like, you know, so like be open, like, hey, we're trying to figure this out too. Let's figure out the best model together. Um, go out with them in the field, work with them so you really have a better working relationship. Make appointments for them. You're the brand, if you're a brand owner, you have more leverage with a bar owner than the brand ambassador does if they don't know each other. They will be like honored, that not honored, but they'll be like, oh cool, the brand owner's actually calling me. There's a connection there. Um, allow them to support the placements that they've made and make sure you have realistic goals. Sit with your brand ambassador, have open conversations. And uh, Lana, I would love for you to talk about this, like a part-time brand ambassador making it work. Yeah, I mean, obviously I think so, to, as early as possible, it, it would behoove you to, to do that breakdown where you look at your time and your, your budget and your uh, expectations and see if there's a match. Because if there isn't, you can address that early and real, you know, get some more resources or change your KPIs a little bit. And then that way you don't spend your first month panicking about why you can't accomplish your goals and think they're going to fire you at every second, which is, I think, a very common <laughs> feeling in that first month is worrying that nothing is good enough. Um, and then from there, you know, I think it's important to, one of the things that people don't talk about about part-time brand work is that you always have ground to make up. You walk into an account and that, that manager is like, oh, you're the, the new part-time guy. Like, great, I'll have you for a couple of months and then somebody else. So overcoming sometimes some reluctance or some hesitation from someone who's used to this revolving door of ambassadors can be a little bit tricky. And you have to put some effort into showing them that, you know, you're serious, you mean to support what you start, you know, you, you have to prove that you're reliable. Um, and that can take a couple of visits. And sometimes you have to explain that, okay, maybe I can open new accounts and get menu placements, but it's going to take a little more time because I have to establish these relationships in a way that would be uh, easier if you were full-time. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, knowing that going in is going to make you feel better about, A, knowing that reluctance isn't about you. It's about the structure of the program. And it's not, you won't feel bad about it. You know, it's a lot of sales and a lot of presentation work is about dealing with rejection, right? And I think you have to get over that very quickly and learn to not take these things personally mm -hmm. so that you can continue to show up and be present and be adaptable and, you know, approach each task and each account as its own opportunity. Great. Um, I think, and uh, the last part is like, I think one of the big, biggest thing is uh, making sure you over communicate, always over communicate everything that you uh, have done, accomplished, what you're planning to do. The worst thing you can do as a brand ambassador, whether full-time or part-time is let your boss wonder what you're doing. Just I, let them know. I think people are afraid to go to their bosses for questions because they feel like they ought to know how to do the whole job already. Yeah. And I have found that it, the reverse is actually true. The, when I have gone back to my direct reports and said, hey, do you have any advice on this? Hey, here's something I'm struggling with. Hey, when I bring that to them, instead of waiting for them to come to me to ask about it, they're incredibly helpful. Everyone has tons of ideas and, and strategies and, and wants, they want you to succeed. 
So it's actually much more efficient. And they've been more impressed with the fact that I wanted to address the problem proactively mm -hmm. than they were upset that I couldn't get the thing done in the first place. Yep, absolutely. So true. Better to over communicate than not communicate at all. Um, Charlotte, let's talk about full time. Uh, I think we just talked about the advantages and the quick disadvantages. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, for a full-time ambassador, like we've said before, the brand the brand ambassador is fully invested in the brand and the company. It's kind of like this in-house uh, resource. Um, for the ambassador, you know, this is obviously, I'm a big advocate for the role, um, but it's a truly, it's a great opportunity to become like an expert in what you're passionate about, right? You have tons of travel. It's a big reason why a lot of us get into this kind of work. And there is autonomy within the role to go out there and create things and become known for what it is you love to do. Uh, you get to eat and drink in some of the finest restaurants and bars in the world. Um, it, it's, it's part of the role, but it is a legitimate benefit. And it's, you know, some of our best stories, our best memories of this work come from those experiences. Um, tremendous networking, right? The, the platform you've got from the brand allows you to network both within the company and outside, but it also allows you to build your personal brand. It can um, springboard you onto the next chapter of your professional life, whether that's within the company or outside. Absolutely. Book deals, bars, everything. So they yeah. are all, all, all on there. What would you say the biggest disadvantage full time? Is there one? Uh, for the brand ambassador, uh, you know, full time, it becomes your life. You know, I've, I resigned myself early on to the view that this is a lifestyle and not a job. And that's not necessarily a negative thing as long as you understand that, right? When you are so tightly associated with your brand, the minute you step out the door, you are on, right? And in social media world, you're always on. So finding a way to be okay with that or make that work for your own particular personal life can be challenging. Um, and we all need time that we can escape and not be on. So work-life balance is still remains the, the biggest challenge, I mm. think, of this particular role when it's full-time. Um, the other thing is when you do work full-time as an ambassador, you're within a corporate structure, but your career path isn't necessarily obvious or as traditional as other people within your own company. Um, and that can be frustrating for some people. It's certainly a challenge. Um, and also, you've a lot of us were bartenders before, right? And when you become a brand ambassador, it's a big shift. You're giving up a lot of things in this industry. I still remember that feeling when I made the transition from bartender to brand ambassador. You felt like you were giving up sort of 90% of your relationships with the other brands you like to work with. Um, so that's a big change you have to be ready for. And then let's be honest, this is a fast paced, demanding job. And it's quite likely that if you don't manage things well, you could burn out. Right. It's not something that you can typically maintain for years upon years upon years. No, it, it really is. It's something you really do have to manage quite well. And also when you if you do want to ever leave your company, it's very hard because you've kind of grown attached to that one brand and everybody associates. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very as hard. I would know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as somebody who's done it, yeah, it's it's, it's quite painful. Um, all right, so we have about ten minutes left, so we're going to quickly go into training and tools. And the good thing is, there's a lot of uh, checklists here. So because this is probably the most important thing you can be doing for your brand ambassadors is not just the training in the beginning, but also the ongoing training. Um, and it's something a lot of people don't spend a lot of time. They kind of just hire their brand ambassador, give them a brand training, tell them how to do their expenses and they get sent out the door and they need so much more than that. And if you give them an investment right in the beginning, it might take more time uh, and more money, but they will get from zero to 60 so much faster and they're more likely to be successful and more confident. So, um, so you know, you really do need to give them the brand immersion if you have the opportunity to go to the, like Charlotte was talking about, like you go to the brand home, yeah. and definitely is part of the experience. I got to do it with Diageo. It definitely made me more passionate about the brands I was speaking about. A lot of say it in such an authentic way and people respect it more because they're like, oh, you've been there, you, you get it. This is not just marketing BS that somebody gave you on a PowerPoint. Um, you also, if you can't do that, you should get a training with a distiller. Uh, if you can, or somebody who really knows the brand inside and out, right? Because I've gotten trained, I've received training from marketing people 
And when I ask them the hard questions, like, you know, so what's the temperature it comes off the still, you know, like, what's the proof? Or like, how long does it get fermented? They're like, yeah, I have no idea. Because they don't know those nitty gritty details sometimes, all right? Um, you should also understand the competitive set. Like, what is the competitive set? So as a brand person, you should be giving them that information. Here's our main competitors. Um, what is the marketing PR plan? Like, what is the plan for the year? So I understand, you know, when I see that billboard here, what the plan is and why it's in that particular place. So maybe I'm targeting more efforts there. They need the big picture, social media strategy, distributors way to working. So many people have no idea how a distributor works. They've never worked with a distributor. They've only like maybe bought products from them. So really understanding if you're in a sales type of role, um, then this is something that's really necessary. Um, sales training, if that's part of your job, like on and off, how to sell to them, how best to approach account, how to gain menu placements. These are all things that a lot of brand ambassadors don't know how to do normally because they didn't have to do it before. How to conduct staff training. Like one of the most valuable trainings I ever got was like presentation training, really understanding how to present your brand in the right way, how to hold the label you know, the bottle in the hand, where to present it on your bar. These are all things that many people don't think of and getting a little professional training is really helpful. And then obviously legal expenses, travel policy, you know, the brand ambassadors should know all the parameters so they can do their job better. Um, Charla, do you want to talk about uh, advanced training? I don't know, or do you want me to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, these are just some of the extra bits, right? Uh, that we can give to ambassadors. And this is all about bringing experts from outside the company in to give your ambassadors further knowledge in areas like social media, right? I spoke earlier about you don't necessarily have to hire social media gurus, but we do need to provide them with the support and the ideas of how to build their following. So it's better for them and better for the brand. Um, media training is a build on how to give presentations, right? A lot of our ambassadors do get TV spots, which is a whole different game to just giving a presentation either on Zoom or in a room full of distributors. It requires a certain extra skill set. So things like that are really important. But also in this COVID world that we're living in, how to be engaging via Zoom is a whole nother challenge that we never really saw coming. And as someone who is used to giving live presentations, and I'm sure the two of you feel the same way, it's really strange and quite challenging when you don't get the energy in the room feeding back to you, either in a good way or in a way that sort of tells you you need to dial up the energy a little bit. It's a very different skill set. So that training is specialized. Um, so we need to sometimes bring in experts from outside the company to help our ambassadors. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the other thing is talking about like a toolkit, things you need to be providing your staff, you know, providing them product samples or budget to buy product, um, sales sheets so they understand like what's the pricing. So when they go out and they're going on a work with, they understand, you know, exactly, you know, what the price deals are. Obviously a budget, if you can, a credit card, especially full time, business cards right away, a computer. Um, if you have company computers, a bio and a headshot. Um, this seems like such a trivial thing, but it's not because if you do get press releases or people want to speak at a conference, they need one of those and you shouldn't let them write them themselves. Have somebody, an expert, really craft it for them and get them a professional headshot um, and then a cell phone because they're on it all the time or at least a budget for one. Those are really, really important. And then lastly, making sure introductions, making sure that they are introduced to everybody so everybody knows they exist. I one time had my, I, my expense account, accounting person calling me, telling me that all my expenses were illegitimate because I spent it all on booze and food. And I was like, that's my job. That's what I do. I go to restaurants and bars. They didn't know I existed. So they didn't know that was a job. Um, HR, IT, brand managers, PR agencies, event agencies, massive distillers, marketing managers, all these people, the distributor. They all should know your brand ambassador exists, what their role is, and what they're going to be doing for them, and giving them time to get to actually know them. Um, and then ongoing training, right? So, you know, as a brand ambassador, you might have been a bartender, or you probably did something differently before. You need to know what the opportunities are. You ever get that question, what are you going to do in five years? It's hard to know if you don't know what the options are available to you. So you can take the time to do professional development with your brand ambassadors. Have them do a job rotation. A lot of professionals do this, you know, go have them work with the sales team for, for two weeks at the distributor or a week. Have them work with the brand team, you know, and the marketing team, like to understand what that means. Um, set them down during brand planning so they see the bigger picture. 
um, developing strategy. How does that work? How do you put a strategy together? Uh, innovation. Uh, Charlotte, you talked about this a little bit about innovation, like, you know, why this is important for them to be part of that. Yeah, sometimes conversations like an innovation meeting, ambassadors can join and actually have the chance to demonstrate the creative skills that they do have, which might not be something they have the outlet in their day to day life. So by inviting ambassadors into these types of conversations, you're actually discovering more skills that you already have on your team. And it gives them an opportunity to shine and demonstrate the skills they have, skills that they maybe can put to use next time a promotion comes around or some other project uh, comes along that they can manage. Yeah, and I think in general, if they just know the big picture of how everything's working and yeah. anything with their pieces, they're much more valuable to everybody else. And also when they're out there, they'll bring research and ideas because they're like, oh, I saw you're doing the strategy and like, I think this could work in this and there's an idea. Um, so it allows them to kind of flex their muscles and show off. Well, yeah, the boots on the ground that the brand ambassador provides, is a, that's not knowledge that anyone in a boardroom is going to get any other way. No, and no. It, can be, it can be useful in so many different facets that that brand master is not aware of until they know how yeah. everything is being used. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And something I think a lot of brands do not tap into. They don't give them the, the credit and, and it's such a yeah. valuable, they are like probably the most valuable tool you have because they're actually seeing this stuff live and how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right. So current times, we're just going to kind of wrap it up uh, with uh, just, you know, some general advice, and I, I've been talking too much, so I, I'm gonna let um, Lana, why don't, you, why don't you take us home? <laughs> sure, I think one of the most important things for a brand ambassador right now, with everything changing every day in terms of restrictions and abilities and, and access, is to be adaptable. Um, you, from a brand perspective, you know, it's important to let the team try new things. You know, you've got to approach every account, and, you know, ask what could be useful, be creative, um, check in more with your staff and then as a brand ambassador with the accounts, just people feel secure. Let them know that you know, their, their position is good, you know, you're, they're valued, um, their insights are still important, they're still being effective. And then utilizing their street smarts, like we were just talking about in terms of uh, allowing ambassadors access to meetings and stuff, their, their insights and what they're seeing on the street is gonna be the most immediate, uh, accurate information you can have about what's going on and what's gonna be uh, effective and useful. So make sure you're tapping into that. There should be more communication now than you've ever had before. Um, and you know, be ready to, to do some brainstorming, to, to get creative in unusual ways. And as you know, Charlotte and Elaine, you both mentioned, move, move the platforms to online. You know, whether that's e-commerce uh, trainings and tastings uh, or Instagram stories, you know, try, try a bit of everything and you might be surprised to see what's effective and what's resonating now. I don't think there's any way to anticipate it. You just have to try a bit of everything and see what works for your brand, you know, for your community, for your audience. Charlotte, any advice, last words of advice? Yeah, I think Lana's absolutely right. It's uncertain times, so you've kind of got to keep flexible, be ready for anything, keep positive. Um, ambassadors need positivity right now, I think. So whatever we can do to, to help feed that in. Um, and my mantra has just been one day at a time. You know, we, we don't know what's around the corner, so let's make the most of the time we have. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, we don't know what the environment's going to be. And then this is also a great time to do extra training right now, right? Because they have a little more time. So this is a time to help them enhance their skills, maybe do some training that they've been asked to them like, hey, where, where do you what do you want to learn about? Because maybe there's some things that they can be doing right now that they didn't have time for uh, before. Yes. Well, that's the end of our seminar. Thank you so much for joining us. And before we go, I just want to say thank you so much to our sponsor. William Grant and to Tales of the Cocktail for having us. To my two amazing panelists, uh, Lana Galliani and Charlotte Fossi, thank you so much for sharing your own knowledge and your insight. And for those of you looking for more information on how to better train your brand ambassadors, or if you are a brand ambassador and you'd like more intel on how to grow in, in, your, in your role, you can head to my website at duffontherocks.com. Click on the tab that says Beverage BA Academy. Sign up and you'll receive a lot of great uh, free intel as well as find out about my online Brand Ambassador Training Academy. 
Until then, I hope you stay safe and I look forward to seeing you all in person for a cocktail real soon. Take care, everybody.